my cupcakes. I'm back with you today, which is Wednesday. No, Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. I'm flying by. Anyway, it's Tuesday, July the 8th, and um, it's the second day of pre-med and intro three, um, week one. Now, what I think you should be able to tell me by now without looking is what is a suffix? Where do you find a suffix? You find a suffix at the end or the beginning of a word or the middle of a word. You find a suffix at the end. What about a prefix? It's gonna be at the beginning of the word. The root, just like the roots on a tree, they're the foundation. If you don't have good roots, you've seen these storms come through. I mean, knock over big, big trees that had good roots, all right? What letter is the combining vowel? Usually it's a what? It's an O, just like me, perfect O, okay? Now, when you take the root and you put it with the combining vowel, that becomes the combining form, like I showed you yesterday on the paper I can't find right now, but it was dermat, and I put dermato, and I'm still looking for it, I'm not coming up with it, all right? Okay. So you should know that without having to look at the book. Also, you should know the definitions of your vocabulary words. You should know what adolescence is. Adolescence is a transition between childhood and adulthood. <laughs> okay? This is where a lot of, you know, I'll make fun of it, but this is where a lot of kids go off the wagon. I mean, they really seem to get lost. They, the peer pressure is great. They get mixed up with the wrong group. The parents don't understand or don't take time. And I'm telling you, for this generation, oh, sorry, for this generation and my grandchildren's generation, thank God they weren't, but a lot of them were what they call latchkey kids. Both parents worked. So when the kids got home, there was nobody there. They had to let themselves in with the key. And, you know, kids can get in a lot of trouble between... 3.30 and the time you get home from work, 6 o'clock, all right? Okay, um, what does BPH stand for? B9, and B9 is not what you will be after you are 8. No, it means not, uh, not malignant. B9, prostatic, now, prostatic, break it down, prostatic, dealing with the prostate, pertaining to the prostate. Hypertrophy. Hyper is excessive or above. Trophy is growth. So you're going to have something that's not malignant dealing with the prostate gland and it's going to grow larger than it should. All right. Now I'm going to tell you something is some things you all as dental assistants can discover with a patient. Okay. They may come in having something wrong with the endocrine system. And what happens is the tongue is very thick and the fingers are very, very thick. And I mean, they can have difficulty swallowing, difficulty breathing. If you notice this, make sure you tell the doctor, okay? Because it's something where there's just a little bitty tumor back up, up in the, past the sinus cavity. And the doctors can go in and remove it. And when they do, guess what? But the patient usually comes to the dentist for a problem. And you, the dental assistant, being perfect that you are, you discover it. So they go to the dentist, you discover it, you tell the doctor, they fix it. Patient is so grateful, all right? Okay, uh, what's neonate? From birth to one month. Remember third base, neonate? Okay, pre-adolescence. What's the first letter of pre-adolescence? And what's the first letter of the word that it defines? Puberty. They don't know, like I said, if they're fish or chicken. And you can't get any more different than fish or chicken, all right? They don't know whether they want to be uh, fried or baked. I mean, they're, 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 and anything and everything you do is wrong. You don't understand. And girls around this time, actually, when they start their menstrual cycle, before that, they may have a craving, I mean, unbelievable craving for chocolate, and you don't realize why. Well, please, if you have daughters, have the talk with them. My girls, 
start their menstrual cycles when they were nine. I don't know, it was the good Lord above that had me have the talk with them before then, all right? To please have the talk with your daughters. There's nothing worse than a girl in the bathroom at school not knowing what's going on. All right, um, what's another word for motor skills? You give me the fancy term. Nerve, what's the term for nerve? Neuro, and what are these supposed to be right there? Muscles, neuromuscular development, all right? Urinary incontinence is the inability to, no, not dance, it's the, do pee pee dance maybe, the inability to control urine. And what's another word for your limbs? Extremities. And subcutaneous tissue is the fatty tissue. Now, if you ever have to give a lady or anybody an injection back here, way, not in the deltoid, not here, but way in the back, back here, don't tell them you have to give it to them in the fatty tissue. Just tell them you have to give it in the subcutaneous tissue. Look. I know I have flab, but I don't want somebody else to tell me about it too, all right? And it's really, that's what it is. When you get older, it starts to sag. All right, um, anybody got any questions? I couldn't hear you if you did, but you could call me with them. All right, um, what age is a preschool? Think about your preschool ages, what were they? Three to six. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. For a younger age, in the toddler phase, one to three. That's the age where my children, a lot of parents back then had decorations on the, you know, the tables and the, around the house and they would pick everything up, everything up so the child wouldn't touch it and pick it up and break it. Ch children don't learn that way. It takes work to be a good parent. Anybody can pick up all your little knickknacks and put them up where the child can't reach them. But, and I'm not saying I was a good, perfect parent, but you teach the child not to touch, all right? Don't touch. I had a friend of ours when we were first married and they had a little boy and he was coming over with his mother to the house and we had just gotten married. We had really nice things out and this is the kind of mother that was totally ignored what her child was doing. And I'm like, <coughs> And I finally got to the excuse where, oh, Chippy, don't touch that baby. That could hurt you. It couldn't hurt him, but I was hoping his mother would turn around, you know, hurt him. Oh, no. It didn't work. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I know. All right. Um, what age does, what's the first menstrual cycle of a young lady called? Menarch. And what age does it usually happen? Around the ages of 10 to 12. Again, it's not written in stone. I started when I was 12. Our next door neighbor didn't start till she was 17. And she was so angry. But I'm gonna tell you why. She was a gymnast. Gymnasts don't have an ounce of fat on their body. You need that, and I don't mean you gotta be but you need the good fat in your body. In oh, that's a mess in order for your menstrual cycle to work. It all goes together. And that's why these girls that come out and they're doing all these floor exercises and the legs are open and they're doing this, they, most of them don't have menstrual cycles because there is no fat on their body. They're 100% lean. Now usually after they stop that, when they get older, sometimes the fat will catch up with you. All right, what's middle age? <laughs> middle age crazy is 45 to 60. Middle age crazy is the empty nest syndrome. For 25 years you've been married and it's like, oh, we gotta go to the baseball game, we gotta go to her ballet, we gotta go to this conference, we gotta go here, there, this play at school, all over the place. You're going and going and going and going and going. All of a sudden, they go off to college and they get married. And now it's just you and him in a nice big house now, this can either go one of two ways. It can either go the way where you realize we really don't have anything in common. It was the kids that we stayed together for. Or it can go the other way where it's catch me, catch me. We don't have any kids at home, all right? But that's the empty nest syndrome. All of a sudden, it's just the two of you. And you 
don't pass each other in the hall and don't talk because, you know, nothing to talk about. All right, older adults, old age or elderly begins around the age of 60, 60. And what causes gray hair besides having children? Pigmentation, the loss of melanin or melanin, if you want to say it, of pigmentation. Pig melanin or melanin is what gives color to everything in our body. The your color of your eyes, the color of your lips, the color of your skin, the color of your hair, all right? And as you get older, just like everything else, you don't make as much. And that's what turns the hair gray. And what's the number one killer in older adults? It is cardiovascular disease, all right? Now, older adults may also suffer from orthostatic hypotension, which means when they sit or stand up quickly, they get very, very dizzy. All right, um, what three things should you always treat the senior citizen like or with? You should treat them with dignity and respect. Remember, I told you yesterday, if it weren't for their generation, your generation wouldn't be doing and having the nice things you have. And you do have some nice things. I don't care what you say. You want to speak slowly and repeat whatever they may need and offer them assistance. Now, you may find a lot of foreign speaking people coming to your office. Usually, they will bring a younger person with them. You know, a niece, a nephew, or a grandparent, or, um, you know, whatever. And um, because I'm going to show you why. You're trying to tell the lady, you know, I'm going to take your blood pressure. Huh? And she just looks, huh? what? I'm going to take your blood pressure. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Getting louder is not going to make those people, or anybody, understand what you are saying. All right? So if you have to, use, you know, show them the blood pressure cuff. Work around with people, all right? Work around with. Also, um, let's see, how what long does American people are expected to live? Now, it's American, 77.9. Some other countries way up in the Andes, oh, 100 is nothing, all right? And the study of aging is known as gerontology. Now, today, I know I emailed you a worksheet. Da -da -da -da. Yes, a worksheet, and it's a human growth, uh, human growth and development worksheet. And I know I hear, here we go, it looks like this. Okay, it's two pages. I think there's 17 questions. And we're gonna go over this. So if you don't have it fully completed, now's your chance, all right? But I would like to think that my ladies, my, my babies, are smart enough and intelligent and self-motivated enough to take it upon themselves to do things when I send it to them. I'm not just sending this to you to, so we could have to chop down another tree to get new, the paper. I'm sending this to you so it will help you. Everybody learns in a different manner. Remember the stages of learning? Some people have to see it. Some people have to read it. Well, we're gonna go over these now and I would like from now on, you, if you didn't do it to now, from now on, please try to work on them. All right, we're going to list the groups of the following. What is a neonate? And that is from birth to one month. Remember, neo is new, nate is natal or pregnant. And B, what is the toddler phase? <laughs> one to three. That's the phase where you're pulling your hair out, all right? Um, like I said, the kids, you tell them about strangers. Don't go near a stranger. Well, who the heck is a stranger? I don't know. We used to always tell our kids. And you know, I didn't feel obligated to explain to them. But I didn't just tell them, no, you can't go in the street. No. My thing was, you can't go on the grass on the other side of the sidewalk. And I said, because there are cars and trucks going down the street. They may not see you. They may hit you. And like I said, I didn't feel obligated like little Johnny's mother. Oh, well, you can have this and have that. <clears throat> no. But I did want to tell them why. Why you can't, If you tell them why they can't do something, they understand it better. All right? 
Okay, and what is the preschool age? That's three to six. That's where when you're dropping them off, even at daycare at this age, no, no, don't give me a kiss in front of everybody. Oh, no, no, no. It goes on even into elementary age, which is the next one, which is six to 12. Yeah, they want to be dropped off a block before they get to school. Oh, they don't want anybody to know mommy brings them to school, much less mommy gives them a kiss on the cheek. Oh, my God, that would be murder. And the next one is pre-adolescence. Remember, P, pre-adolescence. It's puberty. And this usually begins around the age of 10 for females and 12 for males. Now, it's not written in stone, all right? But that's general, the idea. And then we have, after pre-adolescence, you're going to go into adolescence. And that is between childhood and adulthood. Number two, at which age does the highest rate of human development occur? And it's the first year. Think about it. You bring the baby home, babies like this. That's it. Okay? By the time baby celebrates his first birthday, they can probably sit up. They can roll over. They can hold their head up. They may even want to try to feed themselves. Think of the achievements that has happened and taken place in 12 little months. 12 little months. Oh, I got to tell you, in the Asian culture, we celebrate our birthday on from the day we were born and a year later. In the Asian culture, they celebrate the birthday at when you were born at three months. In other words, let's say you were born in um, June. Well, normally you wouldn't celebrate your birthday until next June. No, July, August, they celebrated in September. The reason they add just three months to when you were born is you were in the womb for nine months. So they count that, and then they add three more to it, and that's your birthday, okay? I know, I, I, I can't make this stuff up. All right, um, what years are important learning years? Look, to me, every year, you're never too old to learn, okay? And I learn a lot from you all, but the toddler years are the really years where they want to learn. They're interested, all right? Temper tantrums help establish identity at a person in what age? The toddler phase. Please, ladies, don't give in to temper tantrums. I'm gonna stand here and hold my breath and I'm gonna kick my feet and I'm gonna walk out of the store, bye-bye, and start to walk. Now, I mean, yeah, I know you don't, nowadays you gotta be careful because somebody will see them and pick them up. But, I mean, I don't put up with that because if you cater to that, you are gonna make your life so difficult for the rest of your life. They will learn that if I just bitch and throw a fit and I'll get what I want. <laughs> no, 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 uh-uh. All right, and um, let's see. What age did you, the child seek independence? want to please their parent and self-esteem emerges and that's preschool they want to make you happy look i did this look look you know i made this perfect like i told you with my children setting the table for dinner you know i would leave it i would leave it just like they did it i would not go back and ruin their self-esteem and and redo it oh no no that looks so nice and then the next night, let's try putting the forks here and the knives here and whatever. And, you know, you don't want to make them feel bad because they're trying to do something. All right. Okay. Next one. Oh, uh, at what age is the body type essentially the same as adulthood? And that's adolescence. All right. Not pre-adolescence. By the time they hit adolescence, the body is pretty much like an adult. Remember they went from the string bean at the first family reunion and you go back three years later and the girls are like this and the guys are like this? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That's adolescence. What age is likely to be the most difficult of in self-understanding and self-acceptance? Middle age. Because this is the time where you're supposed to enjoy your career, your life, your family. And if you didn't do much with your life before then, you may not think you have much to celebrate at that time, all right? So, and again, you're gonna go with that middle age crazy where they, look, you know, when my husband hit 40, I said, honey, he says, I'm gonna go out and, and find me two blondes. 
I said, first of all, you got a red head because it was red. I said, you're not wired for 220s, okay? You're wired for me, a 110. Mm. Anyway, that's my height, my, my weight. All right, uh, let's see. The age in, in which relationships with peers are great. Habits are influenced, oh yeah. And the greatest task is to recognize the development of intelligence. Adolescence, all right? The peer pressure is great. I mean, it's you, if you don't go to a certain salon to get your nails done, but you still get them done by a different salon, oh, all right? You know, if you don't have a certain backpack, oh, I mean, come on, please. But you can't explain that to a child. You can't just tell them, oh, come on, please. They don't get it because you didn't get it at that age, all right? Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what age must understand the changes in their bodies minds and cope with society and peer pressure. Again, middle age. This is stuff that you thought would happen in the toddler phase or adolescence. Uh-uh, middle age. All right, we're gonna list the stages of childhood for each. From, uh, do it ages. We have 20 to 45 is early adulthood. 45 to 60 is middle adulthood. And 60 and above is just perfect. No, that is older age or elderly. Number 11, in early adulthood, what's the most common cause of death? That's accidents. Be why? Because people in this, remember the frontal lobe, sometimes doesn't develop fully, and people at this age think they're invincible. Nothing can happen to me. I can go ride that motorcycle and show you where, no, famous last words, okay? All right, and what is important at this age, at the age of, being in early adulthood. That is most productive time in your life. All right, so that's what you all are going through right now. You, you're probably holding down a job. You're going to school. Some of you may have children at home. It's productive, but it's also a little cuckoo. That's why you have to prioritize things in your life, not just at your doctor's office. What happens when a woman goes through menopause? They all go, yay. No, 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 they, well, some of them do. It's the cessation or stopping of the menstrual cycle, okay? All right, um, main goal of gerontology is to live to be 77.9 years, all right? In older adults, what is the most common cause of death? And that's cardiovascular issues, especially down here with the fried food, oh, but it's so good, I know. Okay, list some changes in each of the following systems of an older adult. The skin, hey, you wanna see it? I'll show you, no. The skin, it loses elasticity because the tissue above it and underneath it gets weakened. It starts to sag, wrinkles, and you bruise easily. Muscle and bones, you develop weak bones because of the, the reabsorption is faster than you're making new bones. So your bone thins out, osteoporosis. Also, you may decrease a little bit in height, okay? I don't mean it's gonna be like that, but you may, you know, an inch or two. And, <clears throat> excuse me, heart and blood vessels. What's wrong with that at older age? Hypertension, which is high blood pressure, or hypotension, low. And the brain, well, it works a little bit slower and sometimes it's harder to accept change when you get older. Digestive system, heartburn, gas, bloating, incontinence, constipation. Urinary is the incontinence, okay? Plus benign prostatic hypertrophy. Hearing, sometimes you have a little loss of hearing, especially if in your younger years, you worked around a place that had a lot of loud noises until OSHA came along and made rules and said, no, you work in a railroad or a factory or a shipyard, you." The employer has to supply you with earplugs. Otherwise, you're going around listening to that loud noise all day. For 20 years that you work there, it does nerve damage, and that can cause hearing loss. All right, what are some special health risks of the older adult? Well, they can fall, ask me. Heart attack, thank you, Lord, none. Depression, you're getting older. The kids don't call as much that empty nest syndrome, and your physical appearance changes, all right? So, I hope we got these down, all right? And I hope they helped you all. 
and tomorrow we're gonna go over our, our, our review, okay? So um, go over this, go over your notes, and you, sh you should be fine for tomorrow, all right? I'll be back in a little bit with our intro, but right now I'm gonna text you to tell you I just did this. All right, see you later, love. Bye-bye.